up early because apparently uh, Lemmy has a conference call to be on in 13 minutes and I don't want him to miss the entire thing, so I'm going to go a little early. Why the hell not? Lemmy, good to see you. I'm going to stay as busy as I can today. I'm going to paint my 1,500 square foot house all by myself. Well, M. Hunt, um, I could tell you that you need to uh, to make sure that you don't go overboard. But then I would sound like everybody that has sent me messages in the last two days. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I'm kidding. I uh, I love everybody on the lifeboat. I did get a lot of calls from people that are worried about me, and I appreciate it. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. But let's see some of the ones that I got. Um, I can't pour from an empty vessel. I got that one twice. Um, I probably got a half a dozen. Good morning, Heather. I probably got a half a dozen that said, uh, Tommy, you can't save the world. Well, of course I can. No, I'm kidding. You, you, I may not be able to save the world, and I'll be really honest with you. I'm not trying to save the world. I'm just trying to save some crew members on the lifeboat. And... Uh, if I didn't believe that I could do that, thank you, M. Hunt, I appreciate that. If if I didn't believe that I could save uh, the crew of the lifeboat, then I'm in the wrong line of work, right? Eh? Uh, and I do feel better. I really do. Miss Hermit Hill, Kentucky, good to see you. I will be texting you at about 10 a.m. this morning. Um, so, uh, I went to bed last night. M. Hunt, that's the best comment I've seen. Do you see that, people? M. Hunt says, you can't save the world, but you can save someone's whole world. You can't save the whole world, but you can save someone's whole world. What a great comment. M. Hunt says, grow your beard out long. You know what? It's probably going to come because I'm, uh, for at least for a while, I'm going to let it, uh, I'm going to let it roll. It may sound funny. One of the reasons that, uh, that I shit, you know, was never brought it back after I shaved it the uh, first time because it was about down to here is because of how often people think I'm Johnny and it's uh Donlop good to see you good morning it, uh the number of people that, that would not take no for an answer I would go no I'm not I'm not uh, Johnny Scoville and then they get offended and think that I'm just my brother and I don't want to be kind or, or be nice and I'd be like no really I'm I'm his little brother and I just <laughs> It's uh, it's one of those things, but no, I'm very consider uh, I'm very seriously considering uh, growing it out all the way. So we'll see what happens. So um, you saw the uh, the thumbnail. It was the thumbnail I was going to do last night, but I didn't talk about it at all because I was uh, last night. I was worn out. Um, yes, grow it, and you can prank your brother with videos. I think I, yeah, I probably should do it. I really should, and it probably will be something that I do. So yesterday, uh, people, the uh, the do what you love, Kent Foy, good to see you, bud. The um, the do what you love uh, thumbnail is, I don't know, peeps. This is this is one that is just continuing. Um, it's just continuing to come back again and again and again. It really is uh, is something that I can't get my head off of. It's something that I cannot get my head off. And I, you know, I didn't tell the story yesterday because I was uh, so close to the end of, uh, of being able to stay conscious. So as a, as a watch freak, everybody has a, um, a couple of holy grails. They're, they're watches that they, uh, they want more than anything. And very often it's a, it's a birth year watch, the year, the year that you're born. And uh, I was born in 70, 1970, last century. <laughs> I was born in 1970. So... Uh, and the Rolex Submariner has always been uh, my favorite watch. Good morning, Lady Fiona Crispin. Good to see you. Thank you for all of your effort, Fiona. You guys are going to see some changes in the lifeboat, and it's been my Linda uh, working uh, really hard on, uh, on making some changes, and it is appreciated. And I'll tell you something, peeps. Um, Lady Crispin is a saint because... Um, the amount of, uh, of time that the two of us have gotten to hang out in the last week and a half has been abysmal, honestly. Any other person in the world would have just said, you know what, I'm done with this idiot. But um, I do love you, Fiona. So uh, 
a guy came by right at the end of the show yesterday and apparently he's got like six Rolexes. He was wearing one and uh, he's born the same year as me. So he said to me, uh, you know, he said, I have a Rolex Submariner birth year. Well, they didn't make the, um, the current iteration of that watch was not made in 1970. In 1970, it was the 55 series of Rolexes, which was the James Bond one. And he was looking at a Tudor Submariner hat. He said, what are you asking for that? I said, $12,500. And he goes, oh man, it's just out of my price range. I said, you know, in town I could do it cheaper. And we went back and forth and he was really seriously considering buying it. And then right as the show was ending, I was packing stuff up. He came walking up and he said, would you consider trading the 55? Which is, you know, my holy grail watch. Sadly, I wouldn't be able to sell it, which would be a really big hit to the business. But I was laying in bed thinking about it last night. And you know what, peeps? You only live once. If this guy calls me, I'm going to swap him out. I'm going to get that watch. So, the uh, as far as doing what you love, peep, it, this is one of those things. And I want everybody to understand that. Uh, this is super important to everybody here on the boat. I love you people. Like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I love you people. And there is a lot of concern about me um, burning the uh, the candle at both ends. And I appreciate that. And I mean that. I'm not being, I'm being dead serious. I appreciate how many people um, reached out to me and uh, and were concerned about uh, about what I'm doing. And, and so many more of you who said, uh, look, man, just take time off. We're all going to understand it. Just take time off. Um, we're all going to understand it. I got that from so many people. And I promise you, hear this. I promise you, if I get to a point where this is too much, I'm going to take uh, uh, time and rest. Yesterday wasn't a, a matter of the lifeboat being too much. It was a matter of just being exhausted because of the, uh, you know, you spend 16 hours, you know, in two days on your feet and then the loading and the unloading and the all of the things that uh, that go along with doing a show. When you do a show, you're going to have to run out of there doing what I do. Maybe not if you're selling other stuff, but you know, people come in and want a watch worked on and, you know, because it, it everybody by this point knows that uh, I work on watches. Very often they want a watch worked on. There's no chance I can fix a watch while I'm doing the show. But if they want a battery changed out or something like that, I can do it and it really, really, thank you, Joanna. It really was one of those situations like three times during the course of the show where I had to jump in a car, drive like two miles, grab something, jump back in the car, and then drive all the way back. That's right, the 007. Yeah, that's the, uh, the, the 55 reference number is the James Bond uh, 007 Submariner. And I want one. And I want one from 1970. So hopefully this guy calls me. But I had to jump into the, uh, the the car drive. I have already journaled. It wasn't nice today. But ants on paper out of my head. I'm so glad you said this. And I'm squirreling all over the place and I don't care. Uh, so here's the deal. When you journal, it's always ants. There are a lot of people who really seem to struggle with, with, with this as a concept. They'll say... You know what? I've I've uh, I've tried to uh, journal, but it's always just you know they don't even nothing makes sense. It's all just random thoughts. That's what we're going for. We're not going for Shakespeare. We're going for friggin' random thoughts, because what you're trying to do is empty your cranium of ants and random thoughts. So take everything that you got in there and just dump it out. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it reads. It's just a matter of dumping out the thoughts that you've got sitting on your frontal lobe. Oh my God. Can we get some some prayers for Don, please? Um, pneumonia is terrifying. Can we please get some prayers? Yeah, thank, thank you, Charlie. If we get some ones up there. Um, Don, you will be in my thoughts and prayers. I promise you. That's... Uh, that's scary stuff. Pneumonia is really, really scary stuff. Hey, y'all. I'm back. I was an hour early for my conference call. Lemme, how cool is it to be an hour early for your conference call instead of an hour late? Eh? Seriously, that's good stuff. Yeah, it, that, that really is. Prayers for Dawn Zero. Oh, I'm a genius. That's Dawn Zero.
I don't have an option anymore. My health is a tiny fraction of what it was last month. My digestive system is in shambles. I've done it before and you're going to do it again. And this time you're going to reach out to me and you're going to call me if you need help, man. Don't, there's nothing to be shy about. For real. We're, this is what we do. And, I, and you know what? As I said a little while ago, I get I get emails. I probably got a dozen. I may have gotten more that said, you, you just can't save everybody. I just want to save Emma Hunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to save everybody. I just want to save the people on the boat that need it. Honestly, it would be great if we could save the world. It, it, it is. I'm not dumb enough to think that I can save every person out there. And I'm not dumb enough to think I can save anybody. I'm really not. But I think, uh, ooh, it is early on the West Coast. It is 5 a.m. What are you doing out of coffee? My fingers are shaky and I can't type well. You know what, M. Hunt? I'm not surprised that your fingers are shaky. Uh, this is something that I have learned, and I learned it way too late in life. If you are... If you are in the process of kicking or you're in the process of detoxing or you're in the process of um, going through withdrawals from anything, nicotine, alcohol, weed, and don't tell me there's not withdrawals from weed because there is, um, you know, they may not be the same as withdrawing from uh, an opiate or something, but there's withdrawals from every drug in the world. One of the best things that you can do is pee all day, for real. Just absolutely flood yourself with water today. Uh, and... You know, once once you're into it three or four days, you can drink cold water, whatever. Drink room temperature water. When you're first starting to go through any kind of, uh, of withdrawal or any kind of um, withdrawal symptoms, room temperature water and flood yourself with it. The more that you are peeing, the better off you're going to be. M. Hunt says there are certainly withdrawals from weed. There really are. My, um, my previous business partner, out of respect for me, did not um, smoke any weed if he was in town. Right, he uh, spent about half of his time in a different state. Yeah, bottles and bottles of water. Oh, tea's even better. It really is. It's just a lot more. Uh, you know, takes more time consuming to make or whatever. But the more that you can um, do that, the best. I can attest to weed doing that, Tommy. But thank God I'm on the other side of that. Watching my poor partner, because when he goes to, um, you know, we we basically had offices in three places. We we would joke about it. One is in uh, is in Australia right with uh, with Linda because she one watch that I sold at this show fee didn't track down all of the rest of the watches came uh, or no two 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 were were uh, watches I found the rest were all Fiona so we have an office in uh, in Australia and we had one in Arizona and when he's in Arizona he smokes and he it's not like he doesn't keep his life in order cuz he does so I don't really ride him about it but out of respect, he wouldn't do that in front of me. You know, it, it really is one of those things that uh, he just, he was very, very re, uh, respectful. And um, I shake when I think about buying, it's crazy. Uh, thoughts and prayers, I promise you. You're in my thoughts and you're in my prayers. So, uh, I'm sorry, completely. Yeah, Emma Hunt, you're in my prayers, man. Don, you're in my prayers. So when he would when he would come into town and he would stop smoking, um, he couldn't drink. He couldn't do. There were so many things that just really, really messed him up. Chris King says, drink uh, good water like distilled or coconut, and add a little NAC. I don't know what that is, brother. NAC and zinc. NAC. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Chris King, I hope you did not miss the um, the show that we did on your birthday. If we, if you did, go back and watch it because the number of people that you know gave you a shout out and it was just it was a beautiful thing to see. Salt, there you go. Okay, yeah, the number of people that reached out to uh, wish you a happy birthday and congratulate you on uh, I think it was you were turning. 50 and you were 49 days sober. And there were a lot of people that were really, really nice. And there you go. There you go. And that's logical. I probably should have thought about that. Yeah, Mr. Wolf says niacin too. Uh, 
when you guys get your watches, oh good, Chris, I'm glad. When you guys get your watches this week, I want photos of them so that we can uh, post them up onto the, um, the safe harbor, you know, the place over there. Bert Miranda only got here for 15 minutes on break. Just wanted to say good morning and love y'all. We love you too, Bert. Glad that you're here, man. Truly. Coconut water can be used as a replacement for blood plasma in an emergency. You know, you learn something new every day. I didn't know that, Fee. So, uh, squirrels hunting in the garage. But how cool is that basket? You see the size of that puppy? Huh? That's a happy cat. That is a very happy cat. And the, uh, I'm not joking. I think I, I filmed it on yesterday's video when I was over at the show. But the, um, the number of baskets, I said to the person next to me, I'm like, how many carloads does it take to drive all of those baskets down? And by the way, they were made in Ghana. I was, um, last night, I, the, I was corrected afterwards by somebody that was uh, actually at the show that said to me, they were made in Ghana, fool, not in uh, Kenya. So my bad, Ghana. You know what, Joanna W., you should have seen them all. The, and again, you talk about passion. These people... The the woman told me so much about this basket that I could probably do a one hour show on it. These are not mass produced. These are produced by the locals and they're produced by hand. And the amount of time that it takes to make one of them, these are literally hand wove um, baskets. It was uh, it was pretty amazing stuff. That's a good question too. Did you see what uh, Seven Sun says? How did they figure that out? Were the people from Ghana? They were. Um, one is a doctor um, yeah, and PhD doctor. The uh, The husband um, is, uh, he works, I think, with, uh, with children, but he's got a PhD and he was the nicest guy I ever met in my life. Hey, there is coconut water H3O2 and uh, strictured so it can do much more work. Chris King, you are a font of health information. I love it. Hey, Zen Wen, good to see you. I'd love to get some for my new apartment to decorate with. Well, Joanna, we can make that happen. The, um, especially the, uh, they're, they're local and I found out a lot about them. I got the business cards and everything else. So we will, uh, we will talk about that. The, uh, the number of, um, ZW, the number of, connections that I made at this uh, show was probably more than I ever have. A guy came up to me and said, and it's funny too, because now I'm talking about, um, I'm in the process of planning my move, but, uh, this person, you know, I, I, I've told the story on the boat before. I have spent a lot of time trying to get myself into antique malls, but it takes, you know, you get on a five-year waiting list to get in an antique mall in this part of the, uh, the country because the people are really into it. Um, When I was around day 30 of zero alcohol, I was able to work out again. Uh, M. Hunt, you're going to get this. Is, I, I so wholeheartedly believe that this is your last relapse ever, which means that it was a great one. I mean it, Chris. That's a, You know, consistently, when I had migraines, Chris sent me some uh, some information. He's just somebody that really is uh, seems to have a pretty good handle on, uh, on things uh, concerning health. And, you know, people, the... Uh, the that's the boat in a nutshell. There are so many people with so much knowledge and, and it's, uh, you know, Mark and I used to talk about this back in the day. Everybody has, a, it brings a bit of a different perspective about recovery and about, um, you know, different ways to get through mentally, physically, all of the different things. Um, you know, imagine smoking cigarettes for 50 some odd years and then cold turkey, you know, no more, uh, no more cigarettes because, it's as frightening a concept as that in, is to me. And it is a frightening concept. Um, that's where Vicki Brooke is. You know, God bless her, but Vicki Brooke is, you know, 10 days off of, off of cigarettes. If you've been smoking cigarettes, you know, for four decades and some change, five decades and some change, uh, it is one of those things that is going to just cripple you. You talk about withdrawal symptoms. She has withdrawal symptoms from smoking that mimic you know, tar or, uh, or fent or anything else. And she's sticking with it. So we could, you know, thoughts and prayers for Vicky too. I love Vicky and, and she's going through it. 
She really is. Charlie Mullins, please be safe. Uh. Well, Charlie does work hard, man. M. Hunt, you might not feel like doing it, but start walking and journaling. It really does help. People, it does help. A little bit of walking every day is, is absolutely key. Um, today is a day that I am absolutely going to walk. I'm probably going to put on some ankle supports. I just, I did so much to damage my body over the years that now, if, you know, if I'm on my feet, you know, one day sober is better than no day sober, M. Hunt. You're damn right. And I'll tell you something, people. I, all of the time, the, my biggest pet peeve, if you said to me, what is your biggest pet peeve running the lifeboat? I swear to God, this is a fact. My biggest pet peeve is that I get every day without fail, I, and there's no exaggeration to this, every single day, somebody reaches out to me and says, um, you know, I know it's not very impressive, but I've got one day sober. Or, and it's always some variation on that theme. They'll say, I know it doesn't sound like much, but I've got four days sober. Are you kidding People, one day sober, <laughs> Charlie Mullins, just, I'm sitting here complimenting Charlie on how hard he works and everything else, and he's got to try to slide a little Vegemite in when I'm not staring at the screen. I'm on to you, Mullins. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, <laughs> Charlie, the, uh, it, it drives me insane. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It drives me insane. There is nothing more impressive than when somebody says, this is it, I'm done. That's the, that's the moment, right? That's when all of the, the dreams of, of the things that we do become a reality, right? That, that's the, the hardest. Back on day one, tripped over a table, have some new in injuries, alcohol sucks. Let me, one of these um, relapses is going to be a great relapse. And there is really a huge difference between them and we've talked about it a lot on the show and you've probably heard me say it but i promise you it's one of those things that i'm never ever going to stop saying there are great relapses great relapse and the great relapse is the one where you figure it out my last relapse was the best relapse in the history of relapses as far as i'm concerned because it's the one that when I relapsed the last time, people, I went off the deep end. I didn't relapse for a day. I relapsed for a long time. But the last probably four weeks that I used, I was lower in life than I had ever been. I was devastatedly low. Um, I was in prison and I hated, I hated my life. I just had gotten to a point where, you know, with what I was doing to get, to get the money, like I was really just a dirt bag. You know, um, aside from lying to anybody that would listen, you know, and coming up with all of these reasons why I needed money and everything else. But uh, the other way I was getting money was going and roughing up people that couldn't pay their bills. And I'm not that person. I've never been that person. I'm not. I was a criminal, but I was never a violent criminal. I, you know, I was I was only about taking care of me. There was nothing. I didn't enjoy violence. I didn't get into any of that. But I would go in and tell people, you know, you owe this dude a thousand bucks and you know we're gonna break your thumbs or whatever and it was just you know going in and roughing people up was not i hated my life i really did and that but that last relapse was that last relapse you know and you talk about the, the lord working in mysterious ways i've told the story before but you know i got stabbed and air lifted off of a, of a yard i was not the guy that, that was supposed to get stabbed right they would i just had a ponytail and i walked with a cane because i had had a stroke and they sent the, the uh, this young kid out to go stab the old white dude with the cane, was his instructions. And instead of bringing up my name, he just kept saying, oh, no, I'm friends with that dude. You know what I mean? You know, have somebody else do this. And well, instead of him stabbing a dude named Dave, he stabbed me. And if he didn't, I wouldn't have met Q, right? Because when I got stabbed, I got stabbed on a yard that, that was not the yard Q was at. I got stabbed at Victorville. And then... Uh, after I got shipped to the next yard, uh, is where I met Q. So the world works in mis me, um, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Um, Heather Joy, thanks for all you do. Thank you for, uh, for reaching out. And, uh, you know, I really, God brings good things out of bad, which is why the lifeboat is what it is. 
right? The, you, you talk about having an opportunity to change the world. The world can be changed one recovered addict at a time. You know, uh, it, it really, when you, when you get the emails that say you can't save the world, boy, you can change the hell out of it. You might not be able to save it, but boy, oh boy, can you change it? Because we have changed it. The, the, the lifeboat has changed the world. The number of people who got sober and the ripples that come out of that their kids are not going to be the same. Their kids' kids aren't going to be the same. Uh, one individual really does change the entire planet. And they affect someone, and they affect someone. Ripples. That's exactly right, Fee. It's, um, generations are, are affected. There are, you know, the relationship that I have with my daughter. My daughter is uh, coming to see me for, um, her spring break is coming up, and she's coming to see me. And uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't talk to my daughter. And I have become, and this isn't a brag thing, I promise it's not, it's, it's a celebration thing. Uh, the lifeboat is a blessing, thank God for Tafrina, oh, thank you man, thank you. And yeah, you know what? Wow, that's such a cool thing to say, Kent. I mean that, man, that's such a cool thing to say. I really, really appreciate that. And you know what, I really do love you guys. The... Uh, Today was one of those days, but so the, the, I set an alarm, right? My alarm goes off at four o'clock and it's uh, the telephone alarm, right? So it plays this just terrible. It's like, it's like airplane music. I mean, I like ele uh, elevator music that <laughs> just continues to get louder and louder. So it starts out really, really low and it just goes da 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 and it just keeps getting louder. And, uh, this morning when it, when it went off, I picked it up. I hit the snooze. So you get five minutes and then at 5.04, uh, you know, 4.05 rather, it comes back on. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it today. I'm just going to, I'm going to stay one more day in bed and you know, no one's going to be upset that I'm resting or whatever. So the name of this is do what you love people. This is what I love. It really is. And I may complain about it from time to time because that's who I am, but this is what I love. And this is such a huge part of my sobriety. You know, I get so, I get credit from people who say really beautiful things and they say, you know, I'm, it's so great that you're here for all of the, those people. I am those people, you know, I am those people. I am, I am a member of this boat, right? I get to, I get to do the filming, but I'm here for the same reason everybody else is here, right? To get together uh, and to use everybody's you know, love for one another and, and everybody's dedication to making a, a life better so that anybody that gets anywhere near this. Thanks for all that you do. I have been fighting all by myself and it helps to know you aren't alone and you aren't alone. Let me tell you something. That's, that right there is the comment that you are not alone and the reason that people don't make it is because they try to do it alone. There's no two ways about that. The reason that people relapse is because they don't reach out and call people who are already uh, sober. The reason that that people fail is because they do not have a support group. The, you know, the, I get this question all the time too. What do you think the number one cause of relapse is? Not reaching out to somebody. That's the number one cause of relapse. When I get anxiety, I up my dosage of St. John's wort. It is excellent for uh, anxiety. That's a stone cold fact. And there are a lot of people that do that. We are crew members and we have each other. That's right. That really is. That's right. Ah. Uh, groups. Okay. I wonder if that, you know, there is no judgment. There's absolutely no judgment. And there's no judgment on your 25th relapse because there's there's no set roadmap, right? It's not one of those situations where you can go, how many times have you relapsed? 13, you're cool, two more, you're done. You know, you won't relapse more than 15 times. I relapsed a thousand times. <clears throat> I relapsed a thousand times. And I was blessed to have people that never gave up on me who had every reason to give up on me. Um, and not trying to offend anybody, but I had a God that never gave up on me either, you know? Um, oh, 
Grapefruit can react with medications. There are websites you can go to, put in the medication you're taking, and check to see if there is anything that, um, if you Google it, I can't remember the name of the website, but if you Google it, there are websites where, you know, if you're taking um, lisinopril, you just go and type in lisinopril, and it will tell you everything not to take with it. And there are a lot of um, drugs that you don't want to take uh, grapefruit with. There are drugs that you don't want to be in the sun with. Um, good thing cantaloupe doesn't do that. Oh, you know something, people? Another thing I don't like, I don't like cantaloupe. And I know that's probably a shocker. I can't stand cantaloupe. And I was once on a prison yard that um, grew melons basically for like the entire prison system. And uh, if you, Joanna W., if you Google it, you'll have no problem finding it, I promise. Uh, but they grew cantaloupes for 117 prisons, right? So for like 200,000 people, they grew cantaloupes. And boy, oh boy, they would put it in everything, Ashwagandha. See, that one I've never heard of, Chris. I'll have to Google that. Oh, quiet, Fiona. I know that everybody says that they're yummy. See, Ken Foy, he understands. Yeah, they taste terrible. They just, and I know they're a little too soft. I don't like the texture. I don't like any of those things. I'm missing watermelon. I love watermelon. I am a watermelon fan. Although, you know, now they're making seedless watermelons and it takes half the fun out of it. Maybe it's just because I never grew up. Uh, but there's something about spitting watermelon seeds that just reminds me of summer and all of the good things. Yeah, please do, Joanna, because it's a really a good one. Uh, Heather Joy, also, she, I love ashwagandha. I don't know what it is. My dad used to put salt and pepper on his. Kent, that doesn't make any sense to me, but I know a bunch of people that do it. I know a bunch of people that do it. My grand, my yeah, my grandmother was one of them. I can only eat cantaloupe with vanilla ice cream. Maybe I should try that. Because boy, I hated it. And when I say that they put it in every meal, I'm not exaggerating this much. You got it at breakfast, you got it at lunch, and you got it at dinner. And the entire time I was there, I mean, you got that crap at every single meal. And the other thing was uh, that they grew at the same place was um, butternut squash. And they would serve, and, and I like butternut squash, but I didn't by the time I left. Crazy Cat, good to see you. Glad you're here. It's like ginseng. Okay, there you go, Fee. Right now, Squirrel Nut Zipper is probably going insane because she can hear my voice but she's actually in the garage, so she can't get over here. And I know that right now she's salty because she would rather be in the basket, but she was fighting me this morning on everything. And once she decided to go in the garage, I thought, oh, thank God. 10 minutes of squirrel not trying to take apart the house. And you know what made me think of that, obviously, was crazy cat, because my cat is a crazy cat. Putting salt and pepper and wrapper, salted meats around them is an Italian thing. Um, and wrapping them in salt and meats. There you go. I think I'm going to have to try that to believe it, Charlie. Did anyone know that you can dip a cucumber in sugar and it tastes like watermelon? No, but do you know what? I don't have a problem believing that. It's also an... Yeah, see, Chris, you, you really... Uh, you really are an unbelievable amount of, uh, of information about uh, all things healthy. I'm impressed. I really am. I'm impressed. You must have done a ton of reading. Just back from the hospital. Glad to catch the live. Full of hope. Are you doing all right? You know, full of hope. Probably is one of the most caring people I've ever met. And she worries about me. I'm doing great. I promise you, I'm doing great. I really am. I am doing great. I feel uh, my ankles are still bothering me because it's just that a lot of a lot of ski injuries to the ankles over the years and standing on them all day long. Um, and here's the thing. I, I stand up most of the time anyway. I'm not a guy that sits down ever. But uh, Tommy couldn't have the mushroom. Yeah, no, I can't do anything mushroom related in any way. Mushrooms will drop me and drop me fast. I go into anaphylactic shock. 
I got to EpiPen myself after uh, any mushroom encounters, which is just awesome. Oh, yes. Gave the Sykes polite, angry rant. <laughs> Good for you. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so if you're from outside the uh, good old US of A, nothing is going to happen in this uh, country today because this is the day that we celebrate all of the presidents that we used to have. Um, and I suppose we celebrate the current president. Although I'm not going to celebrate the current president. And here's the thing, not because I'm a, 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 a you know, a, a right leaner or anything else solely 100% because of how the, uh, the Fent crisis is being handled. It's nothing has been done. And, uh, that's one of those things that I am not in any way, shape or form, uh, or form cool with. I'm really pissed off about that. And it's, it's going to stay that way. Charlie Mullins, please be safe. And uh, we will see you tonight on the deck of the lifeboat, live at the fives. I refuse to celebrate. Okay, good, Heather. I'm with you. I really am. I'm with you. Oh, that's right. President's Day. No banks, no post offices, no nothing. Nothing. Uh, I can't ship watches. I can't, uh, I can't do anything. You know what I can do, though? I can hunt for cool stuff. I am going to go back to bed. I am, well, it's trash day, so I'm going to go out in the freezing cold and put out my trash cans. Then I'm going to go back to bed, and I'm going to sleep until about noon. And when I wake up, um, I'm going to get rolling. So I squirrel. It's probably going to come as a shock to you. And I squirrel way more in the morning than I do at night. But of course I'm going to call you. So, uh, see? Fiona just squirreled me right off of whatever I was going to say. So the when the when I hit the snooze the this morning and I said, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to do this. I'm going to uh, I'm just going to sleep because I need to get more. <laughs> you had to get ducks off the porch. Too much poop. Um, the dialysis center better be open. Uh, that would be pretty frightening if they weren't. Um, okay, Kent. These blueprints aren't going to read themselves. All right, my friend, take care of yourself. Glad, glad you got a chance to uh, to pop in this morning. The reason that, so I again, I hit the snooze and it went back off and I said, you know what? No one's going to blame me. I need rest. I'm just going to stay in bed until noon. I didn't get up. It's going to sound terrible, but I didn't get up for you guys. I got up for me. This Doing this recharges my batteries, right? Up here. Now, physically, you know, I, the shows really wear me out. And normally I have a, uh, um, a partner there with me who is, what, 26, right? And works like, you know, he's 26. So he carries in a lot of stuff and he sets stuff up and he runs around. And I'll say, I saw a, uh, I saw a watch in booth two and we were in booth 46. So he would run down the aisle and you know, go check out the watch and then he would research it and do all that. So with him gone, it's just a lot more work. And, but I'm here this morning because this is what recharges my mental batteries. And, uh, so for all of you that, that ascribe all of these really lovely attributes to me, like I'm some kind of a saint, I'm here cause I love this. And yeah, I love all of you, but I'm here cause I love this. Yeah, but I didn't get any sleep last night because of being sick with a lower respiratory infection. Coughed all night. So I prefer they were closed today. Joanna W., I don't think that's something you can skip. We are we are all getting older. My dad, you know, my dad was, um, was famous for saying really funny things. Like when I meet people uh, who, you know, were, were close friends with my dad or people that my dad met while I was incarcerated or whatever... They would all, everyone comes up and goes, your dad said some of the funniest things I've ever heard. Cause he just was one of those guys who was very quick on his feet, said a lot of really funny things. Um, but the one that really sticks with me is, um, getting old sucks, but it beats the alternative, you know, getting old is tough. It really is. It's not, it's not for the faint of heart, but you know, the alternative is not getting old. And I think I would prefer to, uh, you know, to try to at least, you know, get into the seventies and I would, you know. 80s might be nice, probably not terribly realistic, but might be nice. 
You know, the, the list of people on this crew that, that I pray for by name is, in, is literally staggering. It really is. It's staggering. In fact, at any given time, if I look on the screen, I don't think there's any names ever that I see that I'm not praying for. It's a, it's a full-time job, but it, uh, but it pays off. So, as I said, today is going to be a day where I bring the trash out, and then I crawl back into bed and allow the cat to drive me insane for a few hours. Well, from your lips to God's ears, my 94-year-old dad says every day, above ground is a good one. A lot of truth to that. I knew a guy that was a, um, that, uh, was a golfer, and he would very often get paired with us. We would, uh, we would take him out. Um, and the, uh, you know, he, he played alone. So, and there was... Um, usually three of us that played all the time. This is when I lived in Texas. So we would always say, yeah, come along. He, he was really old. He would really slow us down, but he just, he was a fun guy. But, um, he would refer to it as the correct side of the divot, you know, cause if you, when you play golf, you take the little divot out, right? But he would always refer to it as being on the correct side of the divot. How are you this morning? Well, I'm still on the right side of the divot. It is about, yeah, I agree with you, Heather Joy. I really do. I agree with you. And so does everybody else, apparently. <laughs> Good morning, Scooby. Nice to see you. All right, peeps. We uh, we did about 41 minutes. I, I, I like to try to at least do um, a half an hour in the morning. Uh, there, there are days, I'm sure, that we'll get on a roll and I'll, I'll do an hour. But I would like to always make at least a half an hour. And then the night, last night... You could count on one hand. Uh, Lady Spellbreaker, good to see you. Uh, you could count on one hand the number of shows that we did not hit an entire hour on. Uh, usually they run about an hour and one minute, an hour and five minutes, whatever. It's really rare that I uh, end one early. Yesterday I was, um, I am taking care of myself, I promise. The uh, Yesterday was one of those days where I'm shocked that that show went as long as it did. Because I was falling asleep standing up, I really was. I have a um, I have a guy that goes to my church that gave me a couple of watches to repair, and one of them is about 170 years old, 160 years old. And I took the back off of it. It was just one of those really exciting watches, and normally that's something that would keep me awake. You know what I mean? Like oh, I gotta I gotta work on this. I gotta do some research on this. Whatever. Um, I took the back off it, looked down, and went, Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> then I set it down and went upstairs and collapsed. That's decaf, by the way, because I wanted to be able to go back to sleep. So, peeps, I am going to go outside in this absolute freeze. It, uh, it's a pocket watch guy from church. It's a, um, it is, Waltham, before it was Waltham, it was the um, American uh, Waltham Watch Company out of uh, Waltham, Massachusetts. It just became straight Waltham later. But Fee, it looks like a um, it looks like a Fusi. It's got the little bridge with the balance wheel on the top of the um, plate instead of between the plates. But there's no chain. It was the uh, it was probably the first. Um, it was probably one of the first watches that had a spring barrel instead of a Fusi. But, uh, so it's like, um, 1860, 1850, something like that. It's a really old watch. And amazingly, it, uh, it's still, I have to replace the spring, but everything else in it seems to be okay. The uh, balance wheel is intact. So yeah, I'll show you some pictures of it today. Now I am going to go and uh, take out the trash and uh, call Lady Crispin and probably fall asleep talking to her. Full of hope, I promise you, this is exactly what I'm going to do is go to sleep. The cat is not in the basket. I will be back on the fives. So we will see you this evening on the deck of the lifeboat. And I'll tell you ahead of time what I'm talking about, which I don't do very often, but uh, tonight the entire thing is gonna be on automatic negative thoughts. What causes them, how to avoid them, what can happen because of them. Thank you, Lady Spellbreaker. I appreciate that. 
to all of you. I love you people. You know, do what you love. There it is. Right? I'm doing what I love. See you on the deck of the lifeboat, peeps. I love this boat.